What's up tech enthusiasts, it's Farhan. Welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna dive into the iPhone 16 Pro's cameras with a special focus on how it's changing the game for content creators, whether amateur, intermediate, or professional. I'll also be comparing it with my mirrorless camera, the Canon R6. This entire video is filmed on the iPhone 16 Pro using Apple's ProRes Log in 4K 30 frames per second, and I'm not using any mic for this video. Whatever you hear right now is straight out of the iPhone 16 Pro. So I was in Colorado last week and I was able to pick up my phone on Friday the 19th when it was launched and then test it out in the mountains of Colorado filming some great footage, you know, the fall colors and taking some good photos. Now, as a content creator, my focus is on the cameras. I'm not really into the iOS setup and, you know, all the other functions, the bionic chip, etc. My focus is only on the camera. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. What's exciting about this year's iPhone 16 Pro models is that the ultra wide camera can now shoot 48 megapixel photos. Not only that, you can now shoot 4K 120 frames per second in Apple's ProRes Log as well as the Dolby Vision HDR. My Canon R6 can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second. It can't do 120 unless I shoot it in 1080p. However, something to note is that if you're going to be filming in 4K 60 or 120 frames in Apple ProRes Log or HDR, you're going to need an external SSD in order to film that footage. As we all know, the ProRes codec uses up a lot of space. Here's some Canon R6 shooting in 10 bit C Log 3 and 4K. Um, just for reference, the R6 can shoot in 20.1 megapixels, full frame sensor. Now, when it comes to good lighting, both cameras produce stunning results, but the iPhone has a trick up its sleeve computational photography. Those neural engines are working overtime to give you the best possible image in any situation. Now, when it comes to low light, the R6 has always been a beast, but Apple's making some serious strides. Now, the R6 is a powerhouse, no doubt, but it's also bigger, heavier, and requires a bag full of lenses to get the most out of it. The iPhone 16 Pro is always in your pocket. Need to vlog? Just get it out. Now, during my time in Colorado, I was using my phone for maps, FaceTime, messages, emails, social media browsing, uploading videos and photos. And I must say the battery life has definitely improved even more. Like it's great. I charge my phone just once a day. That's usually at night. I put it on charge and it does the optimized charging. And in the morning when I wake up, that's around 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. It goes on the whole day and I use it for whatever reason. Now, this feature that was introduced on the iPhone 14 Pro series where you can run and the phone will stabilize your footage for you, also known as action mode, can film in 2.8K, but you can film them in ProRes log as well. However, if you film in higher frame rates, such as 60 frames per second, you're going to need that external everyday content creators who create content for Instagram Reels or TikTok, they use their phones to record in the normal standard profile. And now they can shoot in 4K 120 frames per second when they need to get that slow-mo footage. So I'm recording this video using my Canon R6. I deleted the second video file from my iPhone thinking it was probably some random one and I also emptied the trash. Anyway, the cinematic mode is pretty good, but that blur still seems a little too artificial, unnatural. It's not the same that you get from professional cameras. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background of the iPhone when taking a photo, and they usually turn out to be a little sharper than you'd want. If you want complete control over your sharpness as well, for example, you're going to have to use a professional camera. While the iPhone 16 Pro will be a powerful and dedicated tool for everyday content creators and will suffice for many situations all these factors that i just mentioned will still mean that professional mirrorless cameras will still have its place for professional reasons as someone who started off with amateur photography using his smartphone started with the iphone 6 plus um, it's a great camera to have in your pocket it gets more and more powerful but what we carry in our pocket is just getting more and more powerful every year what i'm really happy about is that you're getting so many more options on your phone something that you carry with you every day if i'm going for a day trip somewhere i don't really need to take my mirrorless camera with me i can just use my phone to get some great looking footage and some 
good photos. Can you use your iPhone 16 Pro for something professional, let's say to get real estate footage? Yes, you can. Can you get some cinematic looking footage because you're able to record in ProRes log and color graded? Yes, you can. Can you get some good looking photos with it? Yes, you can. But does that mean it has replaced professional mirrorless cameras like this one? And there's a couple of reasons for that. The sensor size, uh, mirrorless cameras have much larger sensors than smartphones. And despite the advancements in the iPhone 16 Pro, um, it still has a smaller sensor. Larger sensors typically provide better low light performance, greater dynamic range, more natural depth of field, higher resolution potential. You have a wide variety of focal lengths with your mirrorless camera. But for photographers and filmmakers, you have more manual controls with your mirrorless camera, such as you know controlling your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO. You've got more manual controls with your professional cameras than you do on the iPhone. Yes, you can reduce um, your exposure. You can increase your exposure. You can use third-party apps uh, like Moments app, for example, in order to control your shutter speed, etc. But you'd have to use um, ND filters in addition with that to control your, uh, to adjust your exposure. Has the iPhone 16 Pro dethroned dedicated mirrorless cameras? Well, not really. And it's kind of complicated. For professional shoots where you need the ultimate control and the highest possible quality, the R6 still has its place. But for everyday content creation, the iPhone 16 Pro is not just catching up. In many ways, it's pulling ahead. It's not just a camera. It's a complete content creation studio in your pocket. From shooting to editing to uploading, you can do it all on one device. And with its improved durability and battery life, it's ready for whatever your creative journey throws at it. I'm working a couple more videos where I'm walking downtown and taking photos of some interesting things using the iPhone 16 Pro and then apply some edits to it. Just, just a fun POV video. I'll also be comparing the iPhone 16 Pro to the DJI Action 5 Pro to compare it in terms of daily vlogging, time lapses, photos, videos, and just making an overall comparison, including audio as well. So what are your thoughts on this? Are you gonna get the iPhone 16 Pro, Pro Max? What are your thoughts of the comparisons with the Canon R6? What are your thoughts on the phone in general? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. This is Farhan and I'll catch you in the next one.